Hello and welcome to Ecommerce Odyssey. Today we're talking to Dan Marsden from Payoneer, who are a leading uh, online payment provider. Dan, could you perhaps start with telling us a bit about what Payoneer does? Yeah, of course. So Payoneer are the largest marketplace payment specialist around the world. And what we do is help predominantly marketplaces in this vertical to receive and send money around the world, as well as marketplace sellers to receive and send money around the world. Um, as well as that, we off- also offer finance and solutions um, and work with other verticals. So travel, Airbnb, booking.com, uh, people like Getty so what, what Images. Percent, what percentage of your business is marketplace sellers? Probably about 30%, maybe a little bit more. A lot of um, Yeah. So if you think of the business in general, it moves from the marketplace space, so Amazon, Walmart, and all of the others, um, and the, the sellers and the receivers on that side. And then if you look at the travel space, you're looking at, as I say, the Airbnbs, booking.coms predominantly. Um, then you look at people like Adobe, people like Getty Images, uh, and we service those clients so as just, well. Just explain to me, perhaps for our listeners, what um, yeah. what is it that, that marketplace sellers, what specific requirements do they have that you that you solve? Yeah, so as the... As the internet economy has kind of gone global, it's allowed small businesses to be global business as well by using the rails that have effectively been developed by the industry and by the big players in the industry. So what we do is effectively make it easier for these now international businesses who are still small businesses to access international banking facilities and fast payments, which traditionally, if you were to rewind maybe five, maybe 10, 15 years ago, it would have been nine impossible to kind of transact in the same way and, and extremely expensive. So our motto is that we help people to transact as easily globally as they do locally, which is how the whole thing's kind of structured, how it's okay. been structured up to now. So let me just, I mean, I'll just use an example because we are, my retail business is one of your disclosure, is one of your clients. So, um, so what we do is we sell um, on, on Amazon in the UK, but also France, Italy, Germany, Spain, USA, Canada, Australia, Japan, UAE. And Amazon has this thing where you can't actually, it'll only deposit funds into a local, locally denominated bank account. So it'll only deposit euros into a bank account, which is based in the eurozone. Um, it won't deposit euros into a, a UK-based euro, so a euro account. So, you know, it's, it's very, very difficult for us as a business to set up a, a bank account in France or something like that. Um, so we use your service, which provides us with a local bank account in these countries, and therefore we save um, the, com- a, a com- the commission fee that Amazon would charge us. Um, yeah, exactly. We, we also have used your... When we were registered for VAT in Europe, we used to use your service to pay for um, uh, our European VAT. Um, and we've also, for example, sometimes we have like bills that we need to pay in euros. So we, we keep the balance in the in the Payoneer account and we can pay in euros directly to people all around the world or whatever currency. Yeah, it works exactly. very well. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. If you think of an uh, international bank account for businesses, that aren't that isn't the bank um yeah. then paying every really other market leader in, in that space yeah so we don't I mean for example we don't, i mean there's obviously some it's not a checking account so we don't you know we, we don't have it doesn't it has some of the it has it has some of the, the the attributes of a bank account but not others so you can't do direct debits on it um or set up standing orders but you can you know if you, what we would do is you know we, we amazon would transfer the you know for example the euros into the euro Payoneer account and they'll sit there until we decide to transfer them to our UK bank account and we charge, you know, Payoneer would charge us a much lower rate for doing that than, than Amazon would. So saves lots of money, um, which is lovely. So I think my second question was how does Payoneer help Amazon sellers? I think we've covered that. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's worth noting as well that um, obviously the space is relatively new on the Amazon side as well. Um, and Amazon have just recently cracked down on that effectively. So they've now introduced the Amazon PSP program, payment service, uh, payment service provider program, which effectively means that they can only now pay out to a select number of these PSPs that people are using to receive money from Amazon in this way. So 
I guess the most notable one that people should probably be aware of that aren't included at transfer wise. They've obviously had a decent impact in the European market. Um, being based in London, they, they've seen some success. Um, and I know some Amazon sellers use them. But yeah, with this PSP program, they can't effectively service Amazon sellers anymore. So as time goes on, as market matures, it becomes a lot more interesting in terms of the service we provide for Amazon sellers specifically. Um, as I said, there's a lot of services that can't receive just because of the strenuous KYC, uh, money laundering th- abilities that Amazon want these providers to have. And when you're using someone like Payoneer who are effectively streamlined to offer this service to e-commerce and to Amazon, it becomes very important with regulation and things like that, that the providers kept up to date. So I've got two questions that lead from that. One is, do you think, why is it that Amazon will only transfer funds locally and they won't? I mean, why is it that they don't transfer funds into a euro, a euro account in the UK? It is just because of cost. and ease. More Yeah, so for them, they, they obviously can transfer across border um but it's just cost it's just costly effectively to offer a money service solution like we offer you need a really in-depth banking network um i assume amazon probably run it through a few of their banking partners and haven't really delved into the the real banking network that we they need in order to offer a comprehensive service at a cost effective rate um so with that obviously their margins are high with their bank they pass those high margins onto their customers and even the time the payments take etc is quite long so really to build a platform like payoneer it, it takes years and i don't think anyone's going to actually come into the market and do it and really disturb the market just because of the amount of time and effort it takes to operate in so- this space you know the reason. So the okay. So the reason that we use Payoneer is because I mean I'm just going to pick out. You know they they charge a lot more than than you know if we were to if we were, you know Amazon will transfer your funds or convert it from you know the the, the local currency into in our case GBP, but they'll charge us a give us a rubbish conversion rate. Yeah. I mean, do you, would there be a danger that Amazon will actually start offering people competitive conversion rates, and therefore you guys will be out of business? Yeah, as, as I said, it's not their business. So effectively, I don't think they will, um, purely because one, I guess they've got the scale, but for them to really delve into being a money service provider, they probably could do it, but it's a lot of effort and it takes away from their core products and their core capabilities. As well as that, I do believe that Amazon like having the ecosystem and developing the ecosystem as much as they can, which this effectively does. So if you have each of these uh, PSPs that they're working with promoting Amazon and ha- even having the conversations we're having today, it promotes Amazon ecosystem. Um, and right. that's the way they've seen success with their marketplace, um, with their affiliate programs and everything they've done. So I think there's a part of that. Um, but yeah, I guess it's not really the biggest fish they've got to fry and yeah. they, still do, they still do make money out of it. Um, people, sellers that aren't aware of PSPs as, as many that are using Amazon yeah. services and they've been charged a bomb for it. So they're seeing some success so there. You've got people um, like me that are penny pinching and, and, and want to find a cheaper solution, but there's a lot of people out there that presumably just do the default and don't worry about it. Yeah. And they're the biggest marketplace in the world. So I think they like the marketplace aspect as well of it, to be honest. Yeah. So I mean, there's certain countries. I mean, I think um, when we were set, I mean, do you guys support Turkey? I don't know. Yeah, go? so so we support pretty much every country around the world. Because the new ones um, are Turkey and um, Sweden and so oh oh the the actual receiving. Um, yeah. So not 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 at the moment. Um, to be honest, most of Turkey is sellers looking to go out of Turkey, um, and this is where we really see strength with us with with our with ourselves. So PayPal can't serve Turkey and other countries who haven't got. The KYC capabilities we have can't serve Turkey, but we we see a lot of success with serving the Turkish sellers who are selling maybe in the UK, Europe. Yeah, because there's US. new. I mean, Amazon's new sites are that I mean, you know, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Sweden. Yeah. Um, I mean, Saudi Arabia. I mean, they're difficult from a number of points of view. But Turkey and Saudi Arabia are difficult from a number of points of view. One is the that well, we can just use the the Amazon's currency service. I mean, you know, it's what's available. And secondly, the returns don't have a return address. So don't yeah. know how that's going to work. How yeah. would you, okay, new question. How would you, 
you know, currency, you know, currency transactions, it's a it's a commodity at one level, you know, it's all about it's all about the commission that you get charged and you know all other things being equal you just go for the company with the lowest commission um how would you how do you guys differentiate yourselves other than just being cheap yeah so i think that in the normal money markets cost is obviously quite important so when you're looking at maybe me selling you five pounds then cost is probably the most important factor of that um, you obviously want your money to arrive there and have the, the faith that your money is going to arrive in our time as well. But where we really start to differentiate ourselves is with our ability in the e-commerce space um, as, a, as a space. So take, for example, yourself as an Amazon seller. We now have the ability to pick you up as an Amazon seller to then offer you the payments product in every core Amazon market. You obviously mentioned Sweden there. That's soon to be coming on board with Payoneer. Singapore's on board, AED's on board. Uh, you can receive from India through Payoneer. So we open up all these doors, which other providers in the space just don't do. Um, it's yeah. not as comprehensive. It never will be as comprehensive because it's not their core business. And this is something that we've really focused on the e-commerce and Amazon with. Uh, second to that, we would offer you the finance in order to reach those markets. Um, the most cost-effective solution to Amazon sellers today is our finance and solution. If you don't have special agreements um, with the bank or with you've got a big offline business where you can raise fun finance, it really is a black hole for funding and um, the Amazon spaces. So we solve that problem for Amazon sellers. And then thirdly, we've got our green channel network, which effectively enables us to refer top Amazon sellers through a referral program internally to Payoneer. Um, they then send out to the marketplaces that the seller might be interested in. So you're thinking of the kind of C discounts of the world, the bowls.com, uh, even the Walmarts, we can kind of build those flows into those marketplaces and make it a lot easier for sellers to sell on them, uh, mm -hmm. as well as obviously all the experience and advice we have in the e-commerce space specifically. So I think there's a lot of added value there um, other than just moving money. I mean, if you could to compare that to a business uh, that doesn't do any of that, I mean, like a transferwise maybe, who's just simply an online interface, you kind of miss out on all of that value that that relationship brings um, yeah. and all of the experience it brings. So yes, we're moving money, but secondly, there's a there's kind of a lot more that we do do. Yeah. And I it's think true it's, to say it's a bit like, valuable. you know, couriers. I mean, basically you imagine these things are all created equal. And it's only when that they start to be rubbish that you realize that they aren't crazy <laughs> equally just think, yeah. you, know, um, you know, you kind of think, well, as soon as you start to have problems, you think, oh, they're all the same, but actually they're not. Yeah, um, I think I think I think as well, if you were to think of the money actually arriving, there's plenty of <laughs> kind of dodgy FX brokers out there that would tell you money's gonna arrive, but it doesn't actually arrive um, or it arrives late. Even for a few days. Whatever, whatever whatever problems there might be, there's there's definitely rogue dogs out there in the London space for sure, um, who acts in those sorts of ways. So it still was quite a worry of just getting your money A to B of the, the fees that are said to be there. Um, and yeah, I think that in terms of being a business, Payoneer are definitely the most professional in the space. Um, and that's kind of evidenced with everything we're doing outside of just servicing the Amazon SMBs. So that that's to say they're now sending a large percentage of eBay's payouts to replace PayPal there and um, sending all the payouts for, for Walmart. So I mm -hmm. think it's also the reputation of the business that, that we have on the line. Um, and if an Amazon seller effectively can be comfortable that we're going to service them well, because we have that reputation on the line, mm -hmm. maybe some smaller uh, player in the space who isn't as experienced or as big as paying it on the whole internet level. Um, might be a little bit might not have the rep might not have the reputation on the line and might do things that, that a big company can't really afford to do okay yeah i mean certainly i mean i certainly know that you guys offer a range a wider range of um of countries than other some of the other providers which is obviously great it's great to get it all in one place at one time um yeah i mean it's it it um it, you know service we've been very happy with yeah. Um, how have you find because obviously you're you know in the maelstrom of of international trade and international currency transfers how has brexit affected have you seen volumes due to brexit are they picking up again yeah so brexit's definitely had an impact on the uk side 
Um, of course, what, what you has... mean? What you mean that it hasn't, you know, made things easier, and we're not like, you know, <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't done much better as a country. <laughs> you surprised yeah, me. I think, I think we should be over the bump relatively soon, though. Um, I think definitely by the end of the year, I think the bump will be over in terms of sellers who aren't selling to Europe or vice versa. Um, but yeah, definitely, there's a lot of pl- people in the space or companies in the space who have limited the amount they're, they're sending to or in stock they're sending to Europe or or maybe Europeans limiting the amount that they're then trading with the UK just because of a fear of the unknown and the uncertainty around the whole thing. So yeah, def- it definitely has had an impact. Um, and I don't think we're quite ready to see the benefits in terms of everything else uh, that the opportunity will bring. So like maybe the US opportunity x y mm-hmm. and z um so yeah it'd be an interesting time but I, I would expect everything would go out to normal there's a lot of support throughout the industry with service providers and people to help people get back on their feet so i think um i think that will clear up and i guess evidence of that is people finding innovative ways to get product into europe like going through yeah Netherlands, i mean i think the couriers i mean from our point of view the couriers have um the issue was really i mean the currency stuff has been fine the um the problem is understanding the the VAT and everything the the understanding how to ship it into Europe was a bit of a problem and the couriers didn't really understand it themselves so because you end up talking to the salespeople um at the courier who who don't necessarily understand how the whole system works and yeah you know you get things like you know who is the importer of record it's all quite that's quite important and and they didn't really, the ones that I talked to didn't really understand what that meant. And so I had to understand what it meant. And oh, it's just a bit, it's all a bit of a struggle. Yeah, I think, um, I think it will clear up though. I, I think that the, the, there's not a, a kind of massive firm wall that's been placed there. I think, um, I think with lobbying government and with different agreements that may happen as well, I think it will. Yeah, and the problem, the problem rather than later. we found is, I mean, obviously previously we used to send a lot of small things via uh, raw mail on track mail, but now because it's going into customs, you need a system, you know, just fly through. Yeah. yeah because there was no border. Now it gets stuck at custom. Well, it goes through, it has to go through customs, which means you need a courier that can basically do the customs clearance and can, you know, can do the, the sort out the duty which means it has to be you can't just send it by raw mail anymore a cheap raw mail service it has to go by a courier and then whereas you know so that's more expensive and then whereas previously the um the the vat was charged on a notional net value um so if you know you had a 100 pound selling something for 100 pounds there'd be 16 pounds of vat in there and um, now they're charging you that, you know, it goes into the Netherlands and they charge you 21% on the gross value. So you've gone from paying £16 to paying £21. Yeah. All to, anyway. Um, I think we could it, all agree that it has made things Not all harder, of us, though. clearly. <laughs> <laughs> you and I can agree that it's it hasn't made things easier. Yeah. Um, so where do you see, okay, in this glorious global Britain, where do you see the opportunities for... You know where where were people doing well? What what export markets are people selling well into? Yeah, I think it's a good question. Definitely, depending on which vertical you're in, there's definitely opportunities in some places compared to others. So I think if you're homeware, for example, that's in huge success with uh, the UAE and and receiving and sending uh, receiving payment from there from which channels? Which channels Amazon. are these people selling through? So this this is through like pretty much Amazon and their own e-commerce stores that we've seen, but yeah, yeah it's people are hugely successful in the ha- in the ha- in the um, in the homeware se- sector there. So if it really depends on what you're doing, but I think the best way forward for for sellers is to make the opportunity every create the opportunity everywhere they can and, and make the most of it. So. I think definitely expanding into places like Mexico, into the UAE, as I said, uh, Singapore as well, another really lucrative market for as a huge expat market there. And people see huge success in the homeware section. Effectively, people in these countries change home like every two years and they, right, okay. they've they got they've got the wealth to be able to uh, redo that home to a really high standard every, every couple of years. And, and then where do they go? They go to kind of Amazon, they go to online stores in order to ship it in from the UK or from the US. 
um, and these places do really well. So I think if you've got a niche like that, you could take advantage of, then just give it some thought and, and really figure out where your product might do well and where, mm-hmm. what the, what the demographic of each country is like. Um, but just in general, I think with the e-commerce space, you haven't really got much to lose by yeah. dabbling in, in any market. Particularly, you particularly can, with Amazon. Dabbling. I mean, the, the accounts are basically free to set up and it's a catalog based system. So you can just add your listings to, to the marketplace and probably yeah. quite a lot of it's already there. Yeah, exactly. Um, I know the US is going to be a big one for UK sellers when the ability to sell on Walmart opens up. I think that's where a lot of people so head it, next. I think that I mean at the moment you have to have a, a has to you have to have a, U, a US nexus as in you is yeah. that going to change. Yeah, so at the moment a lot of sellers are setting up a Delaware entity and then obviously trading through that onto Walmart. But you have to have you have to be shipping from the US, don't you? yes yes but they are soon actually and i yes yes you have to have a warehouse in the us but you can obviously use a third party for that um but they're recently changing the rules to enable foreign sellers and foreign entities to sell on walmart obviously they're starting with china um, and then they're gonna kind of develop that and develop that and roll it out further and um, from my perspective there's there's a lot of demand for sellers to sell on walmart and to and to have that pathway into walmart uh, which is completely understandable, but but yeah, I think they're they're slowly rolling it out and they're slowly yeah, hopefully, gonna, hopefully be nice. open, the, open the doors be, up. Be nice to diversify the number of American companies that we give money to. <laughs> you know that I I you know give yeah, too much money to Amazon. I'd like to give some money to Walmart. Yeah, it's, it's such a fast moving space, though. I think that the key thing for any seller to do is just to keep their eyes open to what opportunities are out there and then to jump and yeah. onto them as soon as they can really. It's very sensible. So what is the, okay, what are your views on the future of online payments? Or what, what trends do you see? So the trend is definitely moving online, right? So yes. I think if you look at the retail, I was looking earlier today at the, the retail, to e-commerce or the, the kind of physical retail to e-commerce uh, percentage difference and and before covid it was it gone from like six to eleven percent twelve percent over the course of a few years uh, with covid it's probably significantly high now i know there's been a 45 percent increase in e-commerce um from the start of covid to kind of the peak of covid so it's definitely accelerated things um and i think that any industry out there if you even step out of retail and you think of travel for example you yeah. think of any anything literally any industry um it's only moving more towards online if it's not already online uh reservations for uh, and payment for for restaurants and and entertainment and everything that you do you, you typically do for yeah. the internet now so i think if you're a payments company and you're embedded in that space the only the future of online payments, like you say, is it's only ever going to grow and it's only ever going to do well. So are you guys going to start offering any, because obviously at the moment you do this kind of, you know, you're kind of a intermediary. Yeah. Enabling people to accept international payments. Are you going to start offering a more kind of Stripe style payment service or that kind of thing? You're moving into other areas? Yeah, I think acquisition is definitely, acquisitions are definitely going to happen. Um, at the moment, we actually orchestrate payments for large merchants so if you think that you're a big a big enterprise that's selling all around the world on your own website we effectively handle the orchestration of any payment that goes through that website at the moment um, mm-hmm. and this is kind of separate from our existing business and what that means is you've got a number of different payment channels and a number of different payment networks you can receive payment into in from and from the merchant's perspective, that's super confusing. So what we do is just all help to orchestrate that, bring them all together into one place for the merchants themselves and make it a lot easier to handle that process and mm-hmm. more cost effective as well. Um, so we're kind of already in that space a little bit. With regards to the actual payment gateway side of things, it'll be interesting to see where we end up with the IPO that's going to be taking place in the next month or two. Um, we're going to raise an awful lot of money. So... I think that money is probably going to be invested into acquiring some businesses, um, as you would expect. But yeah, who those businesses are, I, I'm not quite sure myself. I'm sure. No, probably, you haven't been told. I'm sure they're <laughs> probably. I'm sure they're probably deals being done within Payoneer. But um, but yeah, 
unfortunately I'm not not at that level yet <laughs> so okay last question what has inspired you recently what's inspired me recently um I think within this I, well, a few things I think from a payments perspective and from an online perspective this the whole movement of covid online as as unfortunate as covid's been in a lot of places and still is in a lot of places um i think it's been amazing being able to see the changes that it's brought from mm -hmm. the position that i'm personally in uh, working for an online payments company effectively um especially it works in e-commerce it's been super interesting to see everything and to see the movements and to be in that space is is super inspiring and, and interesting to wake up to every day um for and then you look at the kind of valuations that have been thrown around like the stripe 95 billion it's it's just interesting having a foot in that space um but from the amazon perspective i would probably say the most interesting thing at the moment is the kind of acquiring roll up situation that's taken place where well the amazon these, sellers yeah these large these large acquisition companies are kind of coming in and and investing um, almost private equity into these businesses to scale them up and, and to really change the space. Um, I'm not sure. What, what are your thoughts about that as, as a seller yourself? Um, well, I assume it's a bit different to what I do. Um, I think that, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a bun fight at the moment. It must be interesting to be an FBA seller, especially a successful one. I think that um, they can only really do it because... Um, you know, they obviously these companies are valued at 30 in a multiple of 30 and they're buying these FBA sellers at a multiple of two or three or something. Mm. Um, I wonder how sustainable it is, because, I mean, fundamentally, they're going to end up with a lot of very small products. I mean, what happens is these FBA sellers develop two or three products and they get them up to the top of the Amazon search. And then they obviously, you know, it's quite hard. I mean, you know, I know I've got a business a bit like this. You know, you get to a few million turnover and it's quite hard to grow it. Yeah. And you need to start spending money on lots of different things. And, and um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, they're, they're basically buying these FBA sellers very cheaply, it would appear. Um, and, uh, you know, then rolling them up. And But I, I mean, one of two things. One is I'm guessing with so many different companies entering this space, the price of these companies must got, have gone up enormously. And therefore, it's probably not as, they're not as cheap as they once were. And therefore, they're, business won't be as profitable as it once was. Mm. And two, I mean, they're going to end up with a lot of very, very different products, you know, and very different, you know, made in very different factories. Um, is it, is, you know, is that, is that a good business model? I don't know. I mean, obviously they probably must know an awful lot more about it than I do, but um, you know, it, it, it obviously I mean, with FBA sellers, you know, you don't have all this infrastructure you have to buy because, you know, they're getting it made in a factory in China and shipping it over to the UK, but they'll all be making a few products. And so you're going to end this massive portfolio of products. How do you tie it all together? Don't know. Yeah, yeah. But even, yeah, it's, it's but interesting, it's interesting. perspective. It's done, but I think, well. yeah, from this, just from the kind of space in general, I think it's just, it's, yeah, it's super inspiring, super interesting being being in the space that is changing so rapidly, to be honest with you. Um yeah it's yeah it's just it's just crazy really like you think of i, I think i've been working in the space well for with per, per pen in now for about three years so i think when you you look at each you can see single out an event in each of these years that's been that's been huge and whether that would be through the changing of payments which is obviously rapidly changing or through the change of e-commerce which is rapidly changing i think it's it's a really interesting place to be um, outside of outside of work, though, I'm probably inspired by uh, Man United going to another, going to the final. Hopefully, after today's, today's really how exciting! <laughs> you know, you know, but, 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 but is it the Glaziers that are the, that own it? Isn't it? They're not. They're not. Both. Are you a fan? Yeah, I'm. I'm not so inspired by that, but, uh, but yeah, hopefully they they set up for the four billion dollars <laughs> and and we get a nice rich shake from the middle east somewhere that's what you want you want like a like a, an owner that is just basically got pots of cash that doesn't take the <laughs> interest in it and yeah. as it is a vanity project a bit like but like roman abranovich yeah yeah we could hopefully get get some do man city but we were good before we got the money so hopefully we can be even better but, but we'll see where that goes <laughs> dan it's been great talking to you thanks so much for your time um, cheers
and um maybe we can talk again in a few months when it, when when pioneer is is and gone to its ipo and we know what's happening yeah cool okay. thanks for having me nice to speak to you bye-bye <laughs> cheers bye-bye